Nice to see you too. I'm so excited to be here today. Yeah, us too. So I described your farm as an organic and biodynamic farm. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Well, I am so excited to learn more about <laughs> that. But first, I was wondering if we could go see the chickens. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm super excited to show you. I think they're all having a good time. I can hear lots of rowdiness oh, going on. Yeah? Are so. they louder than my oh my goodness. So this is just a temporary coop. Yeah, right here. so these guys I got a week ago from Kelly, and so I'm just giving them a couple weeks in the holding pen just to yeah. make sure they're all healthy. Once we feel that they that they're all good to go, then we integrate them in with our larger flock so that we just make sure that we don't bring any diseases or any unexpected things in and affect everybody at yes, once. Yes, you're really good with the biosecurity. <laughs> I, I could learn a few things from you. I'm not, you know, I do so much rescue. I know, that's um, what you I said. I have a very small space, so I take a lot of risks. I, I'm glad that I'm showing this today because there's a lot of people that aren't willing to do that and don't want to do that, and, mm -hmm. I, and I absolutely commend them for that. So maybe they can learn something today. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, and we have this ElectroNet fencing that we use. It's a mobile fencing, so okay. we can just pull it out and move it very easily. Um, it's not electrified right now, so... Oh, good, because so. I would probably, I would probably <laughs> zap myself on Yeah, so it's not electrified right now. And so actually, this will be the last day that we have these guys here. They've been here for a week, and so we're going to move them around the corner. So we try and move our chickens about every week, just depending on weather conditions and things like that. But oh, that's, that is ideal. Yeah, you want to keep them healthy. You want to have fresh greens for them to eat, and you don't want them hanging around in their poop. That's, that's the worst <laughs> thing. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. So so, all right, so let's wander back. We'll go to the big coop. Okay. So I have some special boots that you gave me on <laughs> so that we don't, I don't spread any pathogens that might be in Chickenlandia. Yep to your flock right because that's important very important um, so can we go in there we can all right all right <laughs> i'll just i'll don't let me get electrified I'm just you kidding. won't this get electrified this is off so <laughs> Woo. those are my special boots so and the the orange strings that you see those yes. actually unroll and we hook them to either fence posts or T-bars and those are our flight interrupters. So when we're out oh, in the pasture. That's, such, that's so great. Yeah. So that's what keeps them safe. And we've had them in the corral out in the wide open and we have eagles just around the corner from us. So <laughs> thankfully so far we haven't lost any to eagles. We did lose three poults about two years ago to a neighbor's dog up on the hill. But yeah. other than that, we've been pretty pretty lucky. So this has to be the cleanest coop I've ever seen in my life. Well, I made sure it was nice and clean for you to come. <laughs> it needed cleaning anyways after the winter. So Quentin and yes. I cleaned it about two weeks ago, but so, I gave it a little extra love since you were coming okay, today. <laughs> okay. Um, so do you do deep litter? Or? No. So the way this is, you don't have the capacity to do that. Um, so if you pop inside, you can see as I put wood shavings down, so in the morning when you come in, there'll be poop in the walkway. You can see there's a little bit right there. And what I do is I sweep that up into a pile. And then also here are the trays. And this is a roosting area, so they poop on the trays. And so I just basically with like a, a palette knife and um, a dustpan, I just come through, scoop it up, put it in a bucket. Yeah. And I do all of these. And I'll show you, we have doors, so these big trays slide out. Mm -hmm. And so then we clean those up, scrape them, and then slide them back in. And then I just spread, you know, a thin layer of wood shavings every day. And it keeps it nice and clean. And I can yeah. also check the poop so I can see if there's any issues going on. So it's also a great health, you know, a way to keep your chickens healthy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Explain the, who, who, what chicken laid this. <laughs> it's called uh, the fairy chicken. <laughs> yes. The <laughs> this is, we have a lot of issues also. We've had a lot of broodies and we get a lot of, um, 
issues with people pecking eggs. So yes. I put them in there, one, because if when they peck that, it hurts when they peck it, and yes. so then they won't peck good eggs. Yeah. And then also, too, when new chicks start laying, chickens start laying the poults, sometimes they have to get sit on things for a while to get yeah. that feeling underneath yeah. them to get that hormone stimulated. And so putting golf balls in there, or you can get the fake eggs, like here's one of the fake eggs. And do make sure to put marks on them, because I will tell you, I've had them show up, and you think, oh, I'll know which one it is. It feels different. <laughs> they it doesn't. End up in my house. want to mention is that we do so we are both ambassadors for scratch and peck feet mm -hmm. um, and whereas I teach the chicken 101 classes <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Kelly teaches the more advanced classes for chickens so my passion is really getting people started you know simple ways that they can get started and feel comfortable with chickens and making them feel included and all that stuff i am here learning just like you are um there's always something to learn when From it everybody. comes with yeah. chickens so i am excited to talk more about some of the other things you're doing here so can we check out some other projects you've got going on absolutely all right yeah let's do it Explain to me what biodynamic means. So biodynamic principles were started by a gentleman called Rudolf Steiner. Um, he was a he's kind of... He's the Waldorf guy. He's the Waldorf guy, yeah. yeah. So back in about the late 1900s, German farmers were complaining that they weren't getting the productivity off of their lands. And so he sat down and came up with a variety of principles of how to grow and different amendments to use in the soil to help with soil fertility. And so the idea is that this, this whole thing is a system. And so when you're working within a system, you try and keep everything in the system. So that's like the chicken poop is part of the system. Yeah. You know, animal bones are part of the system. You know, all these things. So what you want to do is try and keep everything in here because that's part of your fertility of your soil. A lot of people don't realize this, but when you eat vegetables and all those great minerals, they're little miners. They're taking the nutrients out of the soil and they're going into the plant material and going off the farm. And if you don't replace that, then your soil becomes depleted. And so when you're doing biodynamic farming, you're looking at all those different aspects, not just growing things organically, like not using pesticides and things like that. Wow. So it's a systems approach. It takes a lot of planning. Yes. <laughs> yes. And thought, you know, because it's not like something you're just going to come in and I'm gonna put down organic fertilizer and we're just gonna run these crops through and through and through, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. there's, there's organic that has like the thoughtful principles and then there's just large industrial organic production, yeah. which is a lot of what you buy at the grocery store. And it's many ways not much different than traditional agriculture. Yeah. And so- Isn't that depressing when it you is. think about that? It is, and so really, I mean, when you want to have something that really is you know, the ideal, like we look at the bucolic pictures of a farm and we have like get sold those, you know, on like the Land O'Lakes butter or things like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have all these pretty pictures, but the reality is that's not what most of the farming in America is anymore. Yes. And so what we're trying to do here is we're looking not just what we're going to produce this year, but we're, I mean, this is a huge investment for the rest of our lives yes. that we're going to be here and we're working on building the land, you know, repairing it. Like you can see there's tons of buttercup in here because the horses that were on this land, they overgrazed it. And so that's why buttercup's in here. Yeah. So we have to work on actually building healthy pasture. Okay. So there's pasture management and that's part of what the chickens are involved with on the land is the pasture management. Yes. Yes. Okay, so one thing I did want to mention because not everybody can have a biodynamic farm. Right. I mean, we're all just kind of doing the best that we can. Um but if you even if you're going to the grocery store and you're buying organic vegetables there, if you if you can afford it because there are people that cannot afford it. Mhm. Mm but if you can afford it, you can use that to place a vote 
for where you want farms to go Correct. in this country well, yeah, and, and a, in the world. And there was a study done, I think it was in one of the um, northern European countries where they took kids and put them all on organic foods for one month and they tested their urine and the amount of herbicides and pesticides that left their body in one month was astounding. So that's when you eat conventional, you are consuming a lot of chemicals that you have no idea because it's just residue on the food. Yeah. So it's, you know, it is, it's very important. You know, and it's important for future generations. We want our kids to be healthy. We want their brains to work, their bodies to work. You know, yeah. we've got a lot of disease in this country because of this processed food. And a lot of it comes from the, you know, the industrial agriculture that's taking yes. place. So one mm -hmm. vote, even if you can buy just off the dirty dozen list, there's 12 yes. vegetables, yes. fruits and vegetables that you should not eat, not organic. So Google that, dirty dozen. Yep. <laughs> and do the best that you can. Um, I always, you know, with Chickenlandia, I'm always trying to include people and I do understand that there are people that cannot afford to buy or pasture raised eggs, Right. for example. There are people that don't even live in an area where there's a farmer's market and access to fresh foods. So if you are one of those people that is fortunate enough to be able to buy those types of foods, be able to shop at your neighborhood farmer's market, mm -hmm. uh, then please do it because your vote in that direction, your purchases in that direction, they sway where all of us are, are headed well, to. Well, and where our governmental money goes. Yes. Yes. And That's I what I really too. wanted to say, but she said it. <laughs> um, the other thing I'd say too, like farmers like us, we grow a lot for food banks. So yes. if you are somebody who can't afford it, like literally a lot of us farmers, we donate and we donate a lot of the things that aren't pretty because so many consumers are like set with this ideal of what a fruit or vegetable should look like. Yes. And, if and you they can get, get thrown get away. That, oh yeah. Like that's what the farmers all eat, the unpretty stuff because all the beautiful stuff goes to the markets. I mean, that's one of the big movements in Europe is the basically called the ugly vegetables, fruits and vegetables, and they there sell them go. at a lower price. So it's a movement that needs to start taking place in America too. Yes. Yes, let's do it. Yeah. I want to say one thing, though, really quick, is my cute little greenhouse over here. Yes. My dad built that for my mom in the 70s. And it got replaced on their property and it went to one of his friend's house for a while. And then when we moved up here, he brought it up here for us. So oh. I started and until we actually get our big, huge greenhouse that we're going to be putting in here, that's why there's this big open space, uh -huh. I've done all my starts out of there. I grew starts this year for the first time. It's so fun. It's like making babies. It is. Well, not that fun. <laughs> It's amazing that you guys live so close to each other and you're passing down all this knowledge. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm which, sharing it, the, yeah, which way it's going. <laughs> Some of the building knowledge comes from our way, but I think the plant knowledge to a large extent from yes. Mike and Kelly. Yeah, I get, I've gotten a lot of knowledge from Kelly. Yeah. So I know, I know what it's like. Okay, so this is called Lovage. Lovage, so you want to try it? It's a pretty plant. Lovage. You want to try mm. some? I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Kale taste test. No caterpillars? No caterpillars. Mmm. Oh, that's good. It's good. Isn't it? it really is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it tastes so good. It's really fresh, that's why. This is, what is this one? So that's a, that's a type of red kale. Okay, this is a red kale. I feel like I'm on like a the Food Network show. Mmm, <laughs> that one's good too. It's like sweet. Mm-hmm. So fresh. Yeah, it makes you realize when you're getting vegetables and oh, when they yeah. come from California and Mexico, just yeah. how long they've traveled. That's yeah. part of that, you know, cool cool chain is what it's called, mm -hmm. and how they have to have refrigeration completely yeah. all the way along, and how energy intensive it is. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, Kelly. Well, um, it has been a delight. It has. Thank you for your coming farm. out. I really admire what you do. I aspire <laughs> to what you do. Um, I will probably never get there in in this life. <laughs> um, and that's okay because there is someone like you out there, and that makes me feel oh, good. Well, I, thank I, you. I appreciate what you're doing for the world. Wow. And you too. <laughs> what you do is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be here talking <laughs> if it wasn't for what you were doing. <laughs> One of my favorite things about the country is the way it sounds. <laughs>